previously on Still Timber Sports Australia. Round one in Adelaide, the Tasmanians came out blazing with Gurr. And Steers taking the early leads. But it was a consistent JD head that began to rise to the top. Brad Delosa was never far away and it came down to the showdown. DQ on stand two. Head taking the first win of the season and placing at the top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. The competitors have come to a picturesque Tasmania for the second stop of the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship. As the competitors get ready, let's find out what we're in for. Victorian larrikin Lawrence O'Toole is back. Will his raw talent translate into a title? Wiley veteran Matt Gurr brings his lifetime of experience. Jamie Head's the consistent all-rounder. And the super fit Brad DeLosa wants his name on the crown. 22-year-old Mitch Argent heads up Generation Next. Reigning champion Braden Meyer wants to go back to back. Cody Steers is the youngest athlete, but can he outmuscle his peers? And Brody Dingle is desperate for his slice of still timber sports glory. Over five rounds, they battle it out across Australia in six grueling disciplines, from the gravity defying springboard to the blood pumping hot saw. In each discipline, top place is awarded eight points, zero for a disqualification. The five best athletes will represent Australia at the World Championships as a chopper -roo, with the winner of the series taking on other national winners to become the still timber sports world champion. So with all that in mind, let's get into our first event. The springboard imitates an old lumberjack technique to overcome hard root wood. The athletes cut two pockets in a vertical log 2.7 metres high. With the help of the springboard, they climb to the top and cut through a 27 centimetre diameter log from both sides. Strength, speed and agility are needed for a win. First up, young gun Queenslander Mitch Argent opens up his day with a daunting matchup against master springboarder Matt Gurr. Three, two, one, up! Gurr leaps onto his first board and he's chopping well in front of his home crowd. The Gurr name is legendary in these parts and Matt is living up to his reputation. He finishes his second pocket and starts to attack the block. He's looking quick. In round one, Argent's time was four seconds slower than Gurr's and the margin looks about the same today. The chips are flying on the left hand of the screen. Gurr has settled into a 2-2 pattern. Take note, this is how you chop springboard. Argent is trying to keep up here, but is trailing further behind and it looks like he's out of contention. Gurr is on the back of the log. Is this going to be a new Australian record? It is, but what does the expert think? I uh, had a bit of a hiccup early. I missed my board when I went to pick it up and put it in the bottom hole, but uh, probably cost me a second. And uh, the seconds are valuable when you've got to cut that fast. Victorian Braden Meyer is racing down Gurr's new Australian record with series leader Jamie Head. They're neck and neck in the final stage, but won't be quick enough to take pole position. And it's Head with a narrow win over Meyer. Now it's Lawrence O'Toole and Brad DeLosa Three, sizing up two, their logs. One, oh. It's a long way to the top, and O'Toole is sending splinters in the air, trying to keep pace with his rival in the sky blue. In South Australia, Delosa had O'Toole covered by seven seconds in this event, and his work rate is just that little bit higher. While they finish their first pockets at the same time, Delosa is already done with his second. He is absolutely flying. Springboard guru Matt Gurr should be watching his back with Delosa in scorching form here. It looks like nothing will slow down Delosa today. There's no sign of the abdominal injury he copped a few weeks ago in the Sydney Royal Show, where he pulled out of the standing block mid-heat. Right now, he looks like he's going to be close to Gurr's time. There it is. The wood drops to the ground and Delosa is done. It's a new Australian record. That is fantastic. Let's take a look at the times for the springboard. Delosa did the unthinkable, beating Matt Gurr by the narrowest of margins, 0.01 of a second to set a new Australian record. Championship leader Jamie Ed was third with O'Toole in fourth on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. That was one of the best springboards I've ever climbed, I think. And Matthew is probably the best springboarder in the world. To get a win on him in that, you know, is, is really great for me. The Steel Stock Saw is the first of our soaring events. Athletes run equally matched electronic engine managed MS661CM chainsaws available from any steel store. Placing both hands on the trunk of the 40 centimetre block, 
Athletes reach for their chainsaws on the sound of the gun and cut two perfect cookies within the allocated 10 centimetres of wood or face the dreaded DQ. All in all, it's mind over matter and mastery of the chainsaw that get a stock saw win. In the first heat of the stock hey, saw, we have reigning steel That's timber it. sports Australian champion Braden Meyer fending off a fired up Brody Dingle. They both finished in the bottom half of the pool for the stock saw last round and need to improve today to climb the championship rankings. Things are looking very positive for Meyer. Struggled a bit with the stock saw the last year, so um, I'm pretty happy to get a good time and I've done a lot of training for it, so it's sort of paid off. And that is a new Australian record of 11.72 seconds. But with more heats to come, will Braden Meyer hold on to the round win and the record? With the Steel Timber Sports Series rolling into Australia's Apple Isle, Tasmania, a new Australian stock saw record has been set. But with the rivals lining up, will Braden Meyer hold on to the fastest time? Now it's Tasmania's Matt Gurr on the left against Jamie Head, who is desperate to hold on to his series lead. But Gurr is in form for this discipline after winning in Adelaide. They're neck and neck, but head has the edge on the up cut and goes ahead of Meyer and takes the Australian record. The Delosa O'Toole rivalry has never been stronger than in round two of Steel Timber Sports Australia in Tasmania. The big men of the competition seem to bring out the best in each other's lumberjack skills. What will the stock saw bring? Hands on the wood. Gets it. A pacey start from both Sawyers. Delosa looks to have the slight advantage, but the up cut will reveal all. And there we go, a really clean entry from Delosa. Is that record going to fall again? Yes, it has. That is unbelievable. The third time today that Australian record has been broken. I was pretty disappointed with the last round. I finished with a DQ and the hot saw, and that sort of cost me. So if I can continue on for the rest of the day like that, I'll be more than happy. An amazing event here in Tasmania with the Australian record being beaten three times in the stock saw by Meyer, Head, and finally Delosa. Better still, Delosa is now on top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard in the race for the Tasmanian title. The standing block is the second axe event of the day where athletes simulate an old school technique of felling a tree with an axe. Each athlete scribes their scarf on the 30 centimetre vertically mounted block and then slay at least 50% of the front side before traversing and turning to remove the back half, finalising their hit patterns with ripping overhand drives. As we get into the standing block, first up, we have Tasmanian local Matt Gurr against Queenslander Brody Dingle. It's chilly here in Launceston, but these two have opened up their shoulders and are swinging hard. And there it is, it's Dingle, home with the win. And this cold weather, it's hard to keep warm for us northern fellas, so I'm quite happy with that cut. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be some good cuts to come. If you can just keep improving your best, well, that's all you can do. Next up, head versus steers. Three, two, one, go! With the momentum of a win in round one, steers attacks early against head and look at the size of those chunks flying. This is steers home crowd. They're gonna be happy to see him make the turn first. Head is around two now and he's throwing his full body weight behind every swing. This is incredibly close. They're swinging in tandem and the judges are gonna have to look at the replays on that one. There is a tense weight ahead. Going to the replay, it's Steers. He takes the win by 0.02 of a second. Now it's time for Queenslander Mitch Argent versus Braden Meyer. Two, one, oh. Meyer with expertise, while Argent has the desperation of a man on the bottom of the ladder. 
Meyer heads to the back of the block and he is absolutely in the zone. That rhythm is unrelenting and you can see the wood starting to splinter. This is going to be a quick time. He smashed the Australian record and it's a full three seconds ahead of the rest of the field. I'm pretty happy with that cut and hopefully my time stands and I get the eight points. Once you know you've got a good front, you know you can nearly shortcut the back and it's going to come off with them two drivers and I was pretty happy. It was a clear standing block win for Meyer. How much faster can this bloke go? O'Toole was second, but well off the pace with Steers third. Delosa was unusually slow, actually, way back in seventh. On the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, Meyer, Head and Delosa are crowding the top. Our athletes are once again putting it all on the line today. And don't you wonder, how does one get the stamina and confidence to succeed at this extreme sport? It's certainly not for the faint-hearted. Who better to share their secrets of success than our top eight titans? I know Jim's got lucky undies and that he wears all the time. <laughs> I think a lot of people are super yeah. aren't they? Like, I know, I wear, try and wear the same singlet shopping or same yeah. shirt or lucky pair of whites or something, like yeah. blacks, I suppose. But, no, yeah, everyone's sort of got... I've got a lucky tape measure too. Quite a achiever would probably be Brady Dingle. Um, he's always turning up late to everything. Um, but he seems to be getting better and better every time when we compete against him, so... Yeah, he's, he's one to watch. Well, Brad's obviously married and, you know, done the job, so probably him. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Lawrence needs to uh, get his shirt off, and he's had that off quite in quite a few photo shoots, so, uh, yeah. She said best looking, the, not best body, the, mate. Fence, he's the lady. Two different. Uh, single buck of the competition have to be young Mitch Argent. You know, he's, he's uh, rugged good looks. I wish he'd shave his beard off, but um, yeah, you know, he's, yeah, he's definitely the man. The single buck is a two metre long cross-cut handsaw, fittingly nicknamed the Misery Whip. It's the most physically demanding of the six steel timber sports disciplines. With its peg and raker system, the athlete pushes and pulls the single buck saw through a 46 centimetre pine log. Their wedger oils the saw and drives a wedge between the cookie and trunk to help avoid friction hang-ups. It's a true test of teamwork, fitness, power and technique. At the single buck, Braden Meyer, currently equal first overall today, takes on Brody Dingle. Meyer finished fourth in the single buck in Adelaide, but if he wants to leapfrog Brad Delosa into the championship lead, he'll need a better finish than that. The wedges go in as the athletes get midway through their blocks. This is when the lactic acid really starts burning. Meyer is pushing hard, and the cookie drops. With a cracking time locked in, will the others catch Meyer, or will he come home with the win? We're back in Tasmania for the Steel Timber Sports Series and it's time for Matt Gurr to take on Lawrence O'Toole in an event that's been termed the Misery Whip. Three, two, one, go! Oh. Veteran lumberjack Matt Gurr is here to do his home state proud against northern rival Victorian Lawrence O'Toole. O'Toole is getting the best out of his two metre peg and rake out. He is going seriously quickly. My time could be in trouble here. He threw the block in 18.54 seconds, about half a second slower than Meyer. With Brad Delosa chasing a third Australian record today, Willie really get it in the single buck. 
He has Jamie Head to push him, and you can see the effort they're putting in. There is a reason this is known as the misery, which Delosa must be feeling it now. He's still recovering from injuring an abdominal muscle four weeks ago. But it looks like Head who's struggling as Delosa closes in. And that's the fastest time of the day. Hardest two events, you know, with the injury is the standard block and the single box. Uh, I'm pretty happy they're behind me now. But um, hopefully I can, yeah, just poke along and uh, have another couple of two good events and finish up the top. We knew Delosa would be relieved to have that one done and dusted, and he absolutely owned it. 17.93 seconds ahead of Maya and O'Toole, who weren't far behind. Delosa has the outright lead on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, and Maya isn't far behind with his pet discipline up next. Yeah, on the 1st of January 1984, when I won my first chop, I'd only been chopping for six weeks, and I got $900 first prize. Never looked back. I'm probably not only the oldest in the top eight at the moment, I'm probably the lightest. You know, I've got everything against me because it's a powerful man's event. I've got two good events, really, which is the springboard and the stock saw, and that keeping my head above water. I'm in the Hall of Fame as a legend axeman. I am the official Australian wood chopping coach. So I have a lot to do with the young fellas and I think, you know, associating with the young blokes keeps me young too, so it doesn't do me any harm. I'm in it for the fun and the mateship and um, to probably try and teach these other guys a thing or two. And maybe leave a record behind. Hi, I'm Matt Gurr, 50, from Deloraine, Tasmania, and you're watching Still Timber Sports Australia. The underhand chop is the final axe event of the day and resembles the old-school technique of cutting felled trees down to size. 32-centimetre blocks are horizontally held in steel cradles as the axemen strike circular blows just centimetres from their feet. After removing approximately 50% of the front side, they pirouette to the back, devastating their block with power and precision, eventually driving the wood in two. In the first heat, we have two Queenslanders in Jamie Head and Three, Mitch Argent. Two, one, oh. After falling off the pace in the single buck, Head must really sizzle here in the underhand to have a shot at the Tasmanian title. Argent flips around first. Could the young gun be about to dethrone his mentor? Head won't have a bar of that. He's knocking out huge chunks of wood. It's too close to call from this angle. One more sharp blow from Head and he's through. Three, two, one, go. Lawrence O'Toole should challenge Head's time and you can't discount up and coming Cody Steers. I mean, he just keeps getting better. All their weight is on the balls of their feet as they put their full force into the chopping action. O'Toole is a comfortable lead. Steers is really going to struggle to catch him here. O'Toole's nearing the end of the log. There you have it. O'Toole with an easy win over Steers. With the matchup of the round between Delosa in first and Meyer in second, in who will get the jump into the hot saw? Three, two, one, go. Meyer showed pure brilliance in round one when he reset the Australian underhand record. There's two very different chopping techniques on stage at the moment. Look at the frequency of the hits by Braden Meyer. The speed is incredible. The Losa, he's a few strokes behind, but this is all about Meyer. Look at that. It's another Australian record for Meyer. 18.87 seconds. Been cutting my underhands pretty good now. I was pretty keen for that, so to get the Australian record, I was wrapped. Maya reigns supreme again. Today's time was almost a second faster than his previous Australian record. Head got the advantage over O'Toole, while Delosa struggled in fifth. Maya has been catapulted into the lead on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard and his control with only one discipline remaining. The Hot Saw is the final event of Steel Timber Sports competitions and the most critical soaring event of the day. With custom-built chainsaws weighing in excess of 30 kilograms running 300 plus cc motorcycle or jet ski engines, these adrenaline-filled power saws clock up chain speeds in excess of 250 kilometers an hour. Athletes must cut three complete cookies in just 15 centimetres of the 46 centimetre diameter block. Jump the gun, cut over the line or incomplete cookie will result in a DQ and end any chances of being crowned the champion. 
First up, the master, Matt Gurr, and the, the apprentice, Cody Steers, in a local hot sauce dump. Not a great start for Gurr. That first cookie looks no good. But what's happened to Steers? He, he seems to have a problem with his sauce. Gurr cuts his third cookie, takes a look at his pile, and goes back to a fourth for safety. The clock is ticking for Steers. It looks serious. Can he even get it going again? A little trouble with me back handle, and um, that's what happened then. Once I got a little bit of weight on it, the handle snapped clean out of the back of it, and I tried to start it again, but I couldn't hold the handle. I was just holding all the weight on the trigger, like holding the weight of the saw, so it was a bit sketchy. With Steers having hot saw issues, is he the only one who's going to falter on the home run? Join us after the break to see who fails and who triumphs in the hot saw. It's time for Victorian Lawrence O'Toole and Queenslander Jamie Head to duke it out. Hands on the wood. Gets it. That was a lightning fast start, but O'Toole stumbles on the first cookie. Head is steady. He's on track for a new PB of 8.76 seconds. With Brad DeLosa currently holding second position, he needs Meyer to finish it around four places below his position or suffer a DQ to win the day outright. With so much on the line, Delosa is calm as he prepares his saw. Maya too is focused. He only needs to beat 8.86 seconds to win the Launceston Hands round. On the wood. Gets it. Delosa nails it. What a heat. Maya's time isn't too shabby either. The athletes step back from their saws, waiting for the judges to inspect their cuts. Delosa was just half a second slower than his Australian record, but was it fast enough to take the overall lead? The judge is making sure there are three complete rounds and that the black line on the main block wasn't crossed. Here's the replay, and Delosa's starter handle hits Meyer. He continues to cut a generous first cookie, no problems on the uppercut, and there it is, a disqualification cut line. Got a good cut on one. DQ on two. Yeah, I'm one of them people that just was always relaxed and doesn't fuss me what happens, but I was a bit of trouble there with um, Brad's pull cord and tether and him hitting me. With Meyer's protest acknowledged over Delos's handle hitting him, we have Meyer ready for a recut. Hands on the wood. Gets it. With a flawless cut, Myers won the day, edging out Delosa. What a day of action. Even though Brad Delosa won four rounds and broke two Australian records, he still comes second to a consistent performance from dual Australian record breaker and last year's still Timber Sports Australian champion, Braden Meyer. In the race for the championship, Jamie Head's on top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. Meyer and Delosa have three rounds left to sort out their differences. The right call was made and a lot of people aren't happy, but that's the way the game goes and their luck will be next time. Next time on Steel Timber Sports Australia, we head to Queensland, home of the current Volkswagen Amarok rankings leader, Jamie Head, Mitch Argent and Brody Dingle, where the title contenders start to make a break. So join us next week for more of the original extreme sport, Steel Timber Sports.